thanks to the supporters of channel member B Woodcock. Mrs. Wormuth, I am very impressed with you. You are you are no more than two days late with the fresh news. This is this is incredible. Ear to the ground. Yes, FM21 has been announced. Yes, we have a release date for FM21. Yes, I already made a video about it. And yes, anyone who wants to pre-order a copy of FM21 can do so using the link I've put down in the description below. Discount code LALUJO and it gets you 10% off the already discounted price that it's available for on Steam. You're looking at about £32.39p last time I checked. And I'm absolutely right. It does save them money while supporting the channel. It's a win-win for everybody. Mrs. Wearmouth knows. Hello and welcome to part 102 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, it is our season review and transfer special. As you can see, we did finish off the season relatively comfortably in the end. There was a, a few moments of doubt in yesterday's episode about whether the wheels would fall off completely. Um, as you can see, they didn't. What has gone on here? What on earth has happened to this screen? There we go. That's a little bit more like it. Um, Kev's presets available on the Steam Workshop. That's it, Kev. The FM21's been announced, and I'm plugging my presets for FM20 finally. Amazing. Um, yeah, we uh, th that's where we got knocked out against Roma, and we only lost one game after that. It was against Ike. We finished the league relatively comfortably, won the cup as well. So I think that's eight in a row for us now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row. I think five cups in a row. Let's check that as well. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and six cups in total, all of which means if we head back to the Hall of Fame again, um, we're looking for, in Greece, comfortably the best manager in Greece now um, that there has ever been. Um, and in Europe, we need to win some European trophies because the Greek League, it seems like it means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Look, there's this alternate universe, Kevin Chapman, who only won five leagues, and, I mean, one of them was the National League North. But because of these uh, Champions League wins, look at all those points he's got. We need us some Champions League wins. The job now is to chase down other Kev. That's what we're going to try and do. But it's uh, it's season review, transfer special time. Um, we don't know what we're going to get transfer budget-wise. I suggest probably not as much as we've had in pre... Or not as much as we got last year because of the flop we had in the Champions League. And then we need to rebuild a team that can go on and get back to the Champions League final. We've been there before. We want to get there again. And I think this might be a summer where we get some of our younger non-EU players hitting 23 in that point. We might have to do some selling, is what I'm thinking. So, um, see the season review stuff. Why is it started in the wrong place? This is our overall best 11 now. Two players inducted into this. Um, Unai Dominguez and Duvan Hernandez. I mean, it seems fair that both of them are in this team. So, our all-time best 11 now is Tennessee in goal. A back four of Kansarovic Criado, who is obviously back at Real Madrid now, playing for them regularly. So we're not going to get Criado back anytime soon. And Michaelis. So interesting that Ryan Lawson has now lost his spot as a starter in the all-time best 11. He is still playing regularly for Barcelona, um, but no longer considered one of our best 11 players ever. Calapitas at right back. A midfield of Milo, Cordoba and Duffy. Cordoba. Um, he's playing for Fiorentina. He's been there a couple of years and having a lovely time over in Italy. And then on the wings, we've got Sanchez and Marola with Damien up front. Marola, now 31 years old. We've had him. Oh, he's playing in China now. I'm surprised he left Napoli when he did. But he is now playing in China and banging in the goals there. And Damien, now 27 years old. Yes, I'm scouting Damien again because I can't help but think that without Alan... It is the op it's the time to bring Damien back. The only problem is we're going to have to sell some people to bring him back. If we get a £100 million offer for Solazano this summer, like we did last year, though, you can be damn sure we're selling him and spending all the money on bringing Damien home. That might be a bit of a long shot, but he is banging the goals in for Dortmund now. Whatever wobble he was going through in his final year with us and his time at PSG, he is absolutely unwobbled now. Um, he's got played 29 times for England, only scored seven goals, but the fact he's playing regularly for England again. We want to bring Damien home. He's in his prime. He's an elite striker. He is my target for the summer, but funding that is probably going to be close to impossible. 
Um, our end of season awards, Dominguez gets player of the year, Milo runner-up, then Bill Bow in third place. Goal of the season is Mark Pedraza. Um, Pedraza. I've got to give him a different name. I can't keep calling it. I can't keep naming him twice. And apparently I'm saying it wrong. Anyway, it should be Pedraza, apparently. Um, but he's picked the ball up. This is a weird angle to get this highlight from. I'm not complaining because it shows the goal beautifully. And it is a good, a very good finish. Signing of the season, Xavier Bilbao. £21 million from Barcelona. Can't argue with that at all. Um, Inter are interested in taking him to Italy. Not going to happen. Did you know this man is six foot six? I don't think I've mentioned it before. And Unai Dominguez, young player of the year at 24. I mean, I still maintain cracking signing. People questioned him at the time for £40 million as a player who came in effectively as Cordoba's backup. But he's now had five years with us. He's still young, still winning young player of the year. Not hit his prime yet. And he is one of the best... Oh, I was going to say one of the best central midfielders in the world. What's happened here? Where's his star rating gone? Um, oh, it's the, it's the guy who actually knows what he's talking about doing it as well. He's not even showing as a world-class midfielder anymore. What's happened to Unai Dominguez? Our team of the year, Tanessi in goal, back for of Kansarovic, Hernandez, Bilbao and Kalapitas, because Solazano was out for so very long. It's lovely to see Kalapitas back in the team of the year, by the way. He turns 30 this summer. And I'm hoping towards the end of the summer we'll be able to do the Valentinos Kalapitos um, testimonial. I think you have to be thir- have to be 30 and have been at the club over 10 years. He's been here over 10 years. He turns 30 on the 8th of August, so it'll either be this summer or next summer. We have his testimonial. A midfield then of Milo Duffy and Dominguez. Leica needs to be part of that next year. I want to move Duffy on probably. I mean, if, if we set, if we if we get big money for Duffy. We can use that money to reinvest in Damien. I think that would be awesome. Um, Sanchez, Pedraza, and I think that says it all, that the striker in our team of the year is Sonny. Yes, he's a 19-year-old Brazilian wonder kid with five-star potential, but he only scored five league goals all year. 12 goals from 15 starts in total is impressive, but seven of those four are in domestic cup competitions, so who cares? It doesn't matter. Yes, he didn't start a lot of football, but he's... I mean, at his age, Damien was getting 40 goals for us, so... I don't think Sonny is the long-term answer, although if he gets called up to Brazil at age 19, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we should put some trust in Sonny. He's just not scoring enough goals, though. Top scorer is Marcus Acosta, but it's not enough to get him in the team of the year. Again, he's done. Uh, Dominguez, highest average rating. Calapitas, most assists from right back, still with his very sexy moustache. Scoring, best pass completion. Says a lot about the midfield, as it always does when a goalkeeper wins that. Sonny gets most man of the match awards and Bill Bow and Chermont are the naughty boys club. Season review, we won what we were supposed to win. Mrs. Weirmouth was happy with a first round place in the Champions League. I'm absolutely not. The thing is, she'll probably be happy that again next year because we're, we're a pollen smyrnis. First round in the Champions League is a fantastic performance. Again, what she's looking for this year. Champions League first knockout round. I'll accept it again because I don't want to I don't want to set myself up to fail, but we've got to be a little bit more ambitious than this. I cannot help but to think. Um, our dressing room atmosphere, as you can see, excellent dressing room atmosphere. Now the Allen issues are all gone. I think if we'd have faced, if we got to play Roma again now, we'd beat them now. It was just right off the back of selling Allen and everyone being grumpy about it. It just absolutely derailed the season for no more than about three or four weeks, but it was the three or four weeks where we played Roma. And that just ruined it for us. Michaelis, Duffy and Milo are our team leaders, though. Duffy is probably the most likely of the three to move on this summer, um, at which point we probably need Sanchez or Lencina, who are our captain and vice captain. One of them needs to step up and become the new team leader. End of season team meeting, we can say go win the league because we know we have to go and win the league. We do that every year. Um, end of season break, we're going to go. We always go to Austria. Let's go to Germany and try and hang out with Damien while we're there. Remind him how cool we are. Leica's still making good progress, which is nice. And now, Mrs. Weirmouth, the transfer budgets, please. What have you got for me? Um, Yes, Pedraza should be called up. Oh, we're getting a stadium expansion as well. So initial budgets are pathetic. 11 million and 1.8 million of wage budget. So we've got a little bit of spare wage budget. So we could potentially... It's not Damien money, is it? We've got to sell if we're going to get Damien. But this is interesting. Stadia, what is the point? <laughs> what a waste of four million. I'll have that four million in the transfer budget. A thousand seats is a waste of time for four million quid. 
what a joke. It's going to be finished by July. So that's quite quite an impressive turnaround. I guess this is going to absolutely max out the stadium now because otherwise, why bother? I guess this is going to hit our, our expansion capacity. And then we'll have to, have to get a new ground because 35,000 just isn't going to be big enough for us. Right, let's have a look at the team report. We already kind of know what we want to do. Or I know what I want to do. Um, if we get rid of expiring contracts, I don't think there are any. Um, but looking at the three-star players, where is Solazano? Oh, my word. We turned down £100 million for this guy. Luckily, PSG are in for him again, so maybe all is not lost. He's still got five-star potential. But Tanessi and Doring as our keepers. Kansarovic, Raphael Chermont. We could let Raphael go. Chermont can be our backup there. Bilbao, Hernandez, Jair, and Michaelis as our centre-backs. Calapitas, Solazano, and um, maybe Jimenez. Has Jimenez got his Spanish passport yet, or has he got to do another year? He's got to do another year in Spain, so it will be Solazano and Calapitas this summer for this year. And then Jimenez hopefully comes back in Spanish passport, ready to take Solazano's place in a year's time. That's the plan. Uh, Milo is our defensive midfielder with Miftari, our young Greek player, still hovering around the place, probably never going to be good enough. Um, but the rest of the midfield can all play there. Michaelis can play there. I'm not alarmed by the lack of a second defensive midfielder. Um, Duffy, Dominguez, Laika, Bruman. That's our four in midfield. We don't need to change anything there unless Duffy goes. Um, Sanchez, German, with Chermont as a backup, is fine on the left. Pedraza and Lencina is fine on the right. Carnavali, Costa, Sonny is the weak link. We need a better striker. This guy has got five-star potential. He's 21. He's been with us a few years. He's not scoring goals either. How are we going to find a world-class striker for less than 11 million quid? We've got to sell someone. But if we sell someone, we're going to have to replace them. And we're still not going to get Damien, are we? we? I mean, we did this year with Calipitas at right-back. If someone wants to give me 100 million for Solazano... I can figure the rest out from there. If that if that can be done, please. Time machine. Save reload. Before I show you what I've just done, it's important that we all remember rules are made to be broken. We've been here at Apollo in 12 seasons now. I've never once used the never never, but there was never a rule to say I couldn't use the never never. And I think you can all agree we had some exceptional circumstances and we've used those exceptional circumstances to sign an exceptional player. Don't worry, I'm not mad. It's not Damien. Um, but we have agreed the transfer of Richard, a 22-year-old Brazilian striker from Galatasaray. He's joining us in a £38 million deal. We've spent our entire £12 million transfer budget up front. The rest is spread out over the next three years. I'm not going to make a habit of doing this. This will be the one because we really needed him. And I think he's going to be incredible for us. Um, he's got the Calipitas moustache, which is a huge start. He's a clinical finisher. Um, as you can see, 23 goals from 34 games for Galatasaray this year just gone, including five from seven in the Champions League and a 7.73 average rating in the Champions League. Um, previously been banging the goals in for Shakhtar as well, scoring at a goal every other game over the course of his entire career. He's so much better than anyone else we've got. He is a solid four and a half star current ability player who's still only 22, so has time to get better. He's described as a clinical player. Um, yes, he can't really do anything in the air. Yes, he can't speak Greek. And yes, he's non-EU, so we're going to have to deal with that problem as well. But I think all of that is worth dealing with because I think we've just signed an absolute superstar. And I'm very happy about it. And this is why we had to do the never-never. What a difference the Champions League run makes. Last year's competition prize money, 76 million. This year, 42 million. We lost 34 million pounds in prize money by bombing out the Champions League as early as we did. That money would have covered the signing of Richard in full. Um, good to see Duffy still selling a lot of shirts, although Tottenham are now in for him. All Tottenham, bless you. Do you not remember our negotiations for Alan? We got 99 million... <laughs> Oh, add an extra zero on. I can only assume they've left a zero off the silly gooses. And now Duffy wants to discuss his future. Of course he does. I mean, Paul, they're going to have to give give us a lot more money. Um, 
how do I, which one do I want? Yeah, reasonable amount. I mean, come on, Paul. We spent 40 million on you. We're selling you for a profit. <laughs> we are selling you for a profit, Paul. Well, looks like you're sticking around then. Unless he puts in a transfer request, in which case we've got a problem. Things are starting to move with this summer now. We've uh, Bruno Raphael has gone. Gone to Everton for a deal that could be valued up to £15.75 million. Gone in with a value of £29 million, which suggests we've undersold him a little bit. But to be fair, we spent £2.5 million on him seven years ago. Um, we got a couple of seasons out of him as a regular starter, but he's now behind Kansarovic and Chermont as a starting left-back for us. So to get uh, £12.75 million, rising to £15.75 for our third-choice left-back, that's not too shabby. Um Although Sao Paulo get half of the profits. Yikes. Yikes. I agreed to some silly stuff early on. Um, our youngster that we brought in in the summer is now played for Guinea-Bissau. Still only 17 years old. He's definitely one for the future. Um, Milo scored for Argentina. This isn't what I was trying to tell you. I was trying to tell you we sold Acosta. There you go. We've had a reputation boost. That's handy. Um, are we Are we still... You still have to scroll to find us. We are still below Hoffenheim and Fulham and Villarreal and Bournemouth and Newcastle, Montpellier. Yeah, we're Sassuolo. We're still a small team, aren't we? Um, but we have sold Acosta finally, or selling Acosta. It doesn't go through until the 1st of July. Um, but he is going to... Where is he going? He is going to Freiburg for a deal valued 14.75 up front, 23 million overall. He's another one who we brought in, sold on for a profit, brought in for 4.6 million. He never really did the business for us, as we know. He was he was useful. He was useful at as and when, but he definitely needs a, start, a strike partner. Finished top scorer last year, was key to us getting to the Champions League final the year before. But we've we've upgraded. We didn't need four strikers, and to sell him on at a nice big profit is always handy. And we're immediately looking to reinvest that money um, in a Duffy replacement. Which one is he? Which one is he? Has he rejected our contract? What? That's interesting. He signed a new contract with them. We had a £15 million offer accepted. I thought he was coming in. He's now signed a new contract with an £18 million release clause. So we'll just come in for him again. And we will try and get him because this guy at 20 years old uh, looks like he's going to be awesome and he'll just slot straight in his replacement for Duffy. Yes, it's another attacking midfielder who can play central midfield. We've already got Leica and Bruman, but he's natural there when he arrives. He's a 20-year-old wonder kid. So I want him. Why? Why did, I didn't even see the notification where he rejected our deal. Oh, there it is. He accepted their offer. We'll see about that. Fair enough then. Well, we have reached the 1st of July, and in addition to Richard's signing going through, we've also got four little gifts from past Kev. Let's have a look to see what he got us. So, Freddy Iziaman. Um, I actually sorted this guy out earlier in the summer. This guy I'm familiar with. 17-year-old Dutch under-20 international. One and a half star current ability, but four and a half star potential ability. Um, we just brought him in on a... Uh, he was out of contract, so we just had to play compensation. So, we've stolen him. Um, Leonard Buden um, is an 18-year-old Croatian under-21 international with five star potential right winger. Um, he has come in from Dynamo, and I mean, he's not ready for the team yet, but he'll, he'll be fine. He's only 18. He'll be all right. Uh, Robert Font, this guy is a little bit older. What's the deal here? I've spent 11 and a half... Past Kev, when did you sneak through an 11 and a half million pound transfer from Barcelona for a central midfielder? I'm glad that other guy didn't come through now, because this looks like my Paul Duffy replacement. Three-star current ability, four-star potential... He's as good as Dominguez, Leica, better than Bruman, as good as Milo, can play up from on the wing as well. But really, he's coming in as a central midfielder. Good work past Kev. That's a transfer. Um, and then what else have we got? We've got Richard, who is in, um, still being labelled as a clinical striker, which I very much like the look of. Four and a half star current ability. He's got to come in and score a lot of goals for us, or I'll be very sad. And then lastly, uh, Mahmoud Mahamid is an 18-year-old Israeli and under-21 international, attacking midfielder or striker, five-star potential. Um, he's almost as good as Bruman as an attacking midfielder. Striker-wise, 
he's uh, he's a little bit off the pace, but still very young and still has all of that lovely potential as well. The Acosta deal going the other way has also gone through. Did I just... That did send them on intensive language courses, didn't it? That's what I was supposed to be doing. Let's just welcome them all in and just have a look to see how these players fit together in the squad. So there should just be a way to welcome all. Although I guess there aren't many situations where we make five signings in one go. So I can probably get on board with that not being the case. Give them all a squad number. Lovely little bit of auto number in the way everybody likes it. And then if we just hit auto select, it doesn't include Richard. So this is going to be a problem. So to include Richard, who's going to miss out? Claudio Sanchez. That will never do. We are going to have to move on. Somebody. I just don't know who that somebody is going to be. That's even with Acosta leaving. Hmm. Sanchez is so close to a Greek passport as well. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. How close is he? He's 25 years old now. Oh, he gets his Greek passport in 185 days. I can't sell him now when he's going to be so useful once he's got his Greek passport. But at the same time, I can't upset him by leaving him out of the squad. So there must, there's got to be another, another foreign player who moves on. But Richard, Milo, Tanesi are, th are our three best players. Lencina's up in the top five as well. So that's four. The fifth over 25 one. So Sonny's got a Spanish passport. Jair's under 23. So he doesn't count towards this number. Solazano is under 23, but doesn't count towards that number. Who is the other? Oh, is how Hernandez? He's, does Hernandez count as one of the... Ah, oh, see, Hernandez. We can't let Hernandez go either. Who on earth do we sell? Is it finally time to move Milo on and just go with a 4-2-3-1, which people have been asking me to do for ages. We've got Leica, we've got Bruman. We've only got Milo as a defensive midfielder. Oh, this is going to be challenging. Can I just confirm it like that for now? Nope. So let's just... Can we not do it for now? We'll not do it for now. It's Hernandez getting older that's the problem. Will Sanchez be able to just cope with not being in the squad for the first six months of the season if I do the whole, it was a mistake, and then put him back in at Christmas? Will, he's 185 days. Will he be able to get back in at Christmas? I mean, the problem might be about to sell, solve itself here if that's a big offer from Chelsea for Tennessee. Although Tennessee is the last one that we'd want to let go, really. I feel like there probably is going to, a time is probably going to come where it's taken out of my control. Um, who's unhappy? None of our non EU players. <laughs> that's, that's all going to change very soon. I need to figure out what to do. Is it wrong that I'm on the verge of signing this guy just because he's called Kevin? I mean, he's 21 years old, he's obviously not good enough. He played a few games for Atletico last year. They paid nearly nine million for him off of Sevilla. And he's called Kevin. He had a beard and glasses, nailed on signing. Well, we solved our non-EU player problem. We've sold Lencina well under value here. But he's off the back of the worst season he's ever had with us. He just really went off the boil. Look at how he look at how good he was then. Look at how poor he was this season just gone. I know some of that is because Pedraza came in and kind of took his spot, but they, they very much shared the spot. And we had we had Pedraza, so we didn't need him. Plus, we've he was that was the one position we were able to identify a replacement who can come in. So I'm now gonna ask for confirmation for his replacement. Let's get him in and then you can meet him. We didn't sign Kevin in the end. Um, just while that replacement is going through, just look at all these offers we're rejecting. Everyone is wanted by other clubs. We could have a fire sale here. Um, we've still got Duffy wants to go to Tottenham. Uh, Milo Svila is going to Tottenham as well this summer. Tottenham are just, it's like an Apollo and old boys club at Tottenham. Um, Michaelis is upset about lack of depth up front despite Richard coming in. I'm thinking if we can get a big fee for Duffy, let's just go and buy Damien to calm Michaelis down. Tata is never going to be good enough. He's got his Spanish passport now, but not impressed at all with him. He wants to go out on loan again. Not going to stop him. Doring is a frustrating one because he's 22 years old. We sign him for next to nothing from Dortmund. As a youngster, we've given him a lot of game time, but he's not really improved. He's fine as our backup goalkeeper. 
and now he wants to go to Burnley and he's trying to force through a move to Burnley. I don't understand it. We're a Champions League club. So we're probably going to let him go, but we haven't got a backup goalkeeper if that happens. We've got uh, Mikos Bigalopoulos, who we might... I mean, he's not quite ready yet. And now we can add Claudio Sanchez back to our squad and hopefully calm him down. We're just trying to sort out dynamics this summer. It was dynamics that let us down last year. But this is our this is our replacement for Jorge Lencina. Raymer Williams, we've raided Tottenham again. We're basically just doing a club a player swap with Tottenham. They're signing all our old men. We're signing all their English wonder kids. The Tottenham manager's lost his mind. Um, but this guy, he's six foot four. He's quick. He's good in the air. He's a good finisher. He's a right winger. Yes, he's only got two and a half star current ability, but with that four and a half, five star potential, he's going to end up surpassing uh, Pedraza in no time. And I don't think we're going to miss Lencina very much with this guy coming in on the right hand side to replace him. Yes, we've ended up paying more for him than we got for Lencina, but Lencina was really a victim of circumstance. If we were in a position where we could hold out for a good fee, we'd have held out for a good fee as it was. It just wasn't possible this summer. It was either sell Lencina on the cheap or lose Sanchez altogether. But this way, we can get Claudio Sanchez back into the squad. How is that number? Oh, I was going to say, how is that? It's that number that was the problem, not this one. So we're actually, we could sign, an, we could sign another young non-EU player. Hooray! That won't cause us problems going forward. But hopefully that will, that will sort out uh, Sanchez and take him off the dynamics list ridiculous offers coming in from Leica and he just doesn't want to go and I don't want to sell him. Once Duffy goes, Leica is the man for us in midfield. We've had some massive offers for Chermont as well, who's going to be quite the player for us this season, I think. And there's, there you go, Sanchez is happy to stay. So that's that's one player we don't have to worry so much about. But we do need to get rid of Duffy, but I don't want to sell him at a loss. We've already lost one team leader in Lencina. Losing another team leader on the cheap just seems ridiculous. I want I want 60 million for him. And I don't think it's unreasonable for me to want that. There you go. That's the weird asking price I've put on him. We'll offer him out again. I don't want to transfer list him because then we won't get any kind of offers for him. I think we need to move him on. How much money have we got left? We've still got 9 million. So if we can find a backup goalkeeper for that, which is probably easier said than done, Although a backup keeper doesn't have to be under 23, which is what I usually look for. I mentioned Svilar a minute ago because he was going on loan back to Tottenham from Bournemouth. That was the bid that's gone in. I wonder. I wonder if we could bring him back to Apollon as backup to Tennessee. It seems like an audacious offer. We don't want to spend that kind of money to bring him back in permanently. See, we don't want a mandatory future fee. We haven't even got him scouted. It's a weird one because he was nothing special when we had him before. We didn't even sell him on for much of a profit, but he's gone on to play a lot of Premier League football. Former fair. Are having a laugh though, if they think we can, if they think they can force through a mandatory for future fee of twenty-seven and a half million. I wonder if we can maybe buy him for much less than that. Try and try and convince them to accept a smaller offer that we can, if we can then bump the money that we've got up by selling Doring. It looks like they're really digging their heels in on this twenty-seven and a half million, which I don't get where they've even got this figure from. It's such a weird one. I don't want, I'm not paying that kind of money for Svila. Who else is there? There's no one. There is no one. Who's this guy? Can we loan him? Um, He is not as good as Tanessi, but he's got lots of potential. Can we bring him in on loan, maybe? Unlikely. We'll try. But there's, there's I mean, Donnarumma. Old man Donnarumma. He's only 32. I forget we're not as far into the future as we could be. So again, we're not going to get Donnarumma. There you go. There's your context for how good Tennessee is. Tennessee's better than Donnarumma. We can't ever let Tennessee go. Need a goalkeeper. Well, looks like Duffy's going to force this through. He is now on the transfer list at his own request. Your move, Tottenham. 
I mean, firstly, you're not Tottenham. Secondly, pathetic. We are not, under any circumstances, taking a loss on Paul Duffy. That is where I draw the line. It is 40 million or he stays. He's got, because he signed a contract last summer, he's got two years left on his deal. He can rot in the reserves for two years unless we get our 40 million that we paid for him. Very unhappy with how this is playing out. Oh, the Weymouth Cup hasn't gone well for us this year. Defeats against Barcelona and Real Madrid. We have saved it a little bit with a win over Inter, which means at least we won't finish bottom. But we're also not going to finish in the top two either, which is not ideal for our own tournament. We're the only team that have ever won it. Oh, it's all going wrong and it's all Paul Duffy's fault. I don't know what to do. My, my heart is saying hold out for the 40 million. My head is saying he is a disruptive influence. He is a team leader who is unhappy on the transfer list at his own request. He has all the power here. And we saw the impact a senior player behaving like this can have with Alan. But we got a good deal for Alan. I don't know what to do. We're going to end up selling him on the cheap and I'm going to hate it. And he's going to go on and be brilliant for wherever he goes. Oh, well, we've made a bit of progress and then something else went wrong. It's really been one of those summers. Um, so we have sold uh, Doring. Doring's gone to Burnley. He's got his dream move to Burnley for £16 million. I have no idea what the big draw of Burnley is, who aren't even in Europe. He's been desperate to go there all summer. Now he's got his move. I mean, there's some good business been done there. That has to be said, but insane move on all fronts. Don't really get it. We've also sold Antoine German back to young boys. Um, he'd kind of run his course, similar to a lot of our attacking players last year. Had been fantastic. Not so much anymore. I don't know what's really gone on with our attack. I I blame Alan. I blame Alan for disrupting it all. And, um, I mean, we signed him for 2.2 million, got a few good years out of him and have sold him back to them for big money. I didn't realise they had a 50% sell on, uh, profit sell on thing. So it's actually not that big a deal, but he's gone back. Um, and then we've brought back a familiar face to the club as well. Uh, Kostas Salakis is back. Greece is number one. Um, if you remember, we signed him a few years ago to basically rotate with Tennessee back then and then he forced through a move to Valencia he's been on the bench at Valencia for the last three years and was happy to come back as our backup goalkeeper so somewhere on there I don't even know where it says these days and um, but he's signed a contract as the backup keeper he knows that's what he's coming in to do so Salakis is back um, and we've also signed a couple of young uh, young attackers as well Fur is a 19 year old Mexican who is currently on the verge of going on loan back to Mexico because I decided to recall Armando from his loan at Sevilla. He was on a two-year loan at Sevilla, um, but I was on. I was toying with selling Hernandez and thought, well, I need to get Armando back there while I still can. And then the offers for Hernandez dried up. So we've now got six. I mean, Michaelis is our new club captain and is our sixth choice centre back. That's what I mean about everything going wrong. Um, Armando is back with purpose though, still. Um, I'll show you that in a second. We've also signed Thomas Ludwig, who is a 16-year-old German striker. He was 15 when we signed him. Um, he was supposed to have five-star potential. It's gone down to four-star. He's young. He'll play for our under-19s for a few years, and then we'll sell him for a small profit, I imagine. But the other thing that's gone wrong is Jair has now got a grumpy on because he wants to join Real Madrid. So Armando might take Jair's spot in the team, which would be a shame because Armando's only a centre-back, whereas Jair covers all across the back four. But they're going to have to offer big money. Big, big money. But then you've heard me sing from that hymn sheet before. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed I've accepted a £26.5 million offer for Duffery from Wolves because I just want to get rid of him now. They're not in Europe either, so he's not going to come back and bite us this year. He'll probably end up at Tottenham in a year's time. They'll give Wolves £60 million for him. But I just I don't want a team leader who's asking to leave going into the start of the season, especially because Michaelis still thinks we're lacking depth up front. So that's two of our... Two of our team leaders are unhappy. And one of them have just made club captain. You couldn't write it. Right, I don't get what the draw of Burnley is. But now Calipitas, who's been here for 14 years, has decided he wants to go there. 
I'm on the. I want to give him a testimonial, but it wouldn't let me do it. I've got to wait until next summer. Why on earth do they all want to go to Burnley? What is going on? Just. I've not given up on Chivas either. We've sent fur there. So we took a superstar Mexican youngster off of Cruzers or sent him to Chivas. Little nod, the save that never was. I give up with this boy. I absolutely give up with him. Who's on the transfer list at his own request, forces me and forces me all summer. I accept an offer well below what I want for him. And he turns it down. With his stupid hair. Right, it is Champions League draw o'clock. We are back up to first seeds. I haven't looked at the coefficients this summer. Whatever has caused that to happen. We must have moved back above Turkey on the coefficient list. We haven't. We've moved we're still in seventh place. Turkey have gone above France. So oh. I don't know, are you? We're first seeds. Galatasaray are in there as well. No idea. Did any other Greek teams make it through? Oh, they're so useless. They are so useless. So, we're out first. Group A. At least we avoid all of this lot this time. That's pleasant. Um, but looking at, the, looking at the potential from this group, Atletico, Barcelona, Dortmund, Juventus, Man United, Milan. Oh, a Ryan Lawson reunion. Oh, dear. Give me someone easy. I want an easy route this year. <sighs> Was there a better team in Pot C? Probably not. I imagine we'll get... Who's the best team in here? There's not... I mean, it shouldn't be anyone in Zenit. It should be comfortable. We should beat Porto as well. We're not going to beat Barcelona, but... We've had worse draws in the Champions League, that's for sure. I'm glad we were top seeds again, not having to fight through as a third seed. This breaks my heart. This is not what I expected to see on deadline day. We've been together so long. Is he a legend yet? Because he should be. Top of the favoured personnel list. I mean... He's earned the right to do what he wants. And if he wants to go, he wants to go. What is the draw of Burnley? If you're wondering how Richard's getting on, by the way, because we've played the first couple of games of the season. As you would expect, he's come in and got injured immediately. So um, he broke his arm. He's going to be out for another couple of weeks yet. He's not had a preseason. He's going to be great. Well, in the end, he didn't go. Duffy didn't go. The two biggest deals in Greece this summer, Richard and Williams. Um, and Ike spent £21.5 million pounds on a goalkeeper. What are they up to? What's your game, Ike? What 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 is happening here? We are in a little bit of a uh, push for some success, are we? My word. They spent more money than we spend most summers. Ike mean business, boys and girls. So we can't get in the Champions League like They've got him. Now that I'm very upset about because I wanted to sign him when he went to Wolfsburg. Why is he not coming up on my scout reports anymore? Sack all the scouts. He's Greece's number nine. He, I mean, yeah, I would have liked that. Thanks. So to summarize our business, it's been one of those summers. This has been a nightmare. Um, we've somehow spent £100 million, £75 million of players sold, um, but Duffy's still here. Oh. Who knows? It's going to be one of those seasons, I think. Dynamics is done. Although, to be fair, we're up to an excellent dressing room atmosphere again, despite the fact that two of our team leaders are both unhappy. Two of our team leaders and our longest-serving player, all unhappy. But nobody agrees or disagrees with them. It's like they're just off in a little world of their own and no one cares. No idea what impact it's going to have on the season. It hasn't stopped us scoring nine goals with no reply in our first couple of games. So, 
Guess we'll see how things work out tomorrow when we'll have Zenit and Porto. Need two big wins there to set up the Barcelona doubleheader the next day. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.